All right, everybody, welcome to uh, Got Therapy. I'm Michael Baltimore, but uh, look, a special have... guest. And uh, this is Dr. Jeff Conklin. Good morning. Along with... A man who was responsible for this at some point. Yes, that's how I explain the world. <laughs> really? It's... 84% yeah. of the population right. you, you, is average you, you, you... or below. Okay, there you go. He's on. He's on camera saying that. So. Uh. So eighty. So, uh, but how, how does this? How does this explain the world? How, how does this heuristic uh, sort of organize the world for you? What, what does it do? When you see people out there and they do something that's completely boneheaded, and you're going, mm. "Oh my God!" What more? Just think, they're average. They're ex- that's, <laughs> that's average. where they plug in. That's like, yeah. That's eighty-four it, it, percent of the world. They're right there. Uh, there's quite a few of them too. It they turns are, out. There are, <laughs> yes. If we look I, at I, those numbers, I think so, I may be at this uh, end of the uh, some days. <laughs> on the curve, so I don't know. Uh, Some mornings, right? <laughs> I might, I mean, might be on that end. Yeah, it's. Um, All right, so guys, this is uh, this is going to be fun. It's Saturday morning, downtown Columbus, and uh, what else is going on besides uh, suddenly, got therapy? Suddenly, I craved. I was at a craving for a corn dog. You ever get that? Just sort of a sudden urge for a corn dog? Um, Never for you, a corn dog. You, you, you want Never. the truth? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to say. And you yeah. don't eat meat. How can you eat a corn dog? Morning oh, Star makes listen. a faux corn go. dog. I didn't know that. I do four wow. faux corn dog. Wow. This is say, um, um, wow. It's no funny. telling. What because I've, I've, I've always had an interest uh, in, in in carnival workers, and two of the folks that I know who, who, who work in carnivals smell like corn dogs. Oh, they always smell like corn dogs. Yeah. So, it's I, like fast food workers, right? Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> you, you can't. We're, we're, we're in fast food. Can you get a corn dog? What's a... Uh, I don't know. I, I don't, don't think know. so. I think oh, oh, Sonic. I know, I know. There's a new place called the Cookout. Is it Sonic or is it Crystal? Has those little oh, oh Sonic, 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 Sonic is, yeah, it, right? okay, yeah. yeah. And uh, Cookout out by the mall. Do, you, Do they have corn dogs? All? They've got everything oh, I didn't that you know that. Shouldn't eat. They've yeah, got well, it all out there. They so. have onion rings. That's what's important. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> now that's a different story. Not connected to the corn dog, but uh, okay, that, that's onion rings is sort of the, you know, the. Um, the kink food of fast food. It's not, you know, it's, <laughs> people don't like talking about it. <laughs> I don't know. But they like them. They yeah, just don't yeah. want to nothing, nothing wrong with us. It's 84% of, uh, of the people rings. like them. Okay. <laughs> in fact, I would think that probably fast food might hook a considerable number of the folks on that end. Oh, I wouldn't you believe think? that. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. I mean, I was wondering if you really had a problem with that statistic because, mm-hmm. after all, it's the bell-shaped curve, and there you go. You mm-hmm. look at the numbers. You add them up, Jeff, right? Every so, time. Am I wrong? But every out. time I see a bell-shaped curve i get i find it oddly erotic so am i the only one uh, that's only you mama problem, no one else <laughs> i don't know what that <laughs> okay i could tell already this is going right go down down the tubes before we get uh, get this thing saying. started but uh so i don't know but it's great to have you in here jeff how have you been doing man, man i was I'm uh, doing great great yeah i saw you yesterday Appreciate we had the a little invitation lunch. yeah we did well yeah. listen you you're you're invited anytime i mean there's i've invited hundreds and hundreds of people to come in Most uh, to be with no better and no no one has <laughs> taken it you're are. the f- second uh, <laughs> there we go yeah. so uh good luck to you in the next few minutes is what i'll say yeah. right, uh, right now there's a homeless guy out there in the rain saying you know what i think i'll stay in the rain you know <laughs> i could have been on the show I could, have been on. could be warm and dry no thank you i think i'll just choose yeah, yeah, yeah i'll choose a, pneumonia yeah. it's not I'll really just it, above by average. the dumpster you know <laughs> above average oh, yeah. and going that's what he's doing so um i don't know what our topic is today I, I thought i got a little bit of a text but i wasn't sure where you wanted to go with this well, today and and by the way hang on jeff we're about to get started so okay. there you go all right <laughs> here's what i was thinking because um i was i was listening to one of these ever listen to one of them podcasts the yeah. podcasts yeah that's oh, I've, I've heard them. kind of what we're doing here yeah, but right. go ahead. So, once or twice <laughs> that's what so i was listening to a podcast and i went uh, several of them and they were talking about you know the the, the um the purpose of music, like yeah. what it does yeah. to us, what it does for us, and all that sort of stuff. And, and, and I'm, I'm a tad obsessed with music. That's why I was mm-hmm. asking earlier about what kind of music you sure. like. And I think sure. you'd said uh, Boxcar Willie or... <laughs> no, no, Slim Whitman. <laughs> Slim, 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 Slim Whitman. Not many people Same will admit category. to that. You know? I don't, <laughs> okay. I'm not sure. That's, that's okay. <laughs> If, well, I apologize if I was setting you up for yeah, the next you, thing you to sure come. Were. But, yeah, evidently so. <laughs> but but that's okay. I, I actually like. I, I remember they used to sell a um, Ronco record of Boxcar Willie. Did they? Yeah. Remember it would come on Ronco. late. Night. They were always late night, yes. right? The, yeah. the, the, the guy he's the guy with the. With a, Put it in the roaster thing, and it spins around, and uh, that Boxcar guy. Boxcar Willie was known for harmonica, wasn't he? He would play the train harmonica, woo, 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 
Bob? Did Bonica? I don't no. know. I think Man, that's Boxcar sorry, Willie. Sorry, I thought he was an authority. <laughs> that would make sense with a name like Boxcar Willie doing the train sounds. You know make that train sounds of their monikers. That's on. all I remember. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, so, but you're saying music has music, a so I thought, and, purpose, right? So and, let's and talk about we it. We all in this room like music, right? Yes. This is yeah, so, yeah, pretty much. And, and it might, you know, and so maybe we could just open up some questions about, like, um, you know, its purpose, um, maybe even to uh, to think of how it might organize our lives in some form or fashion, because maybe it has. Like, if you were to think about uh, the songs of your youth, mm-hmm. what is the soundtrack for key developmental moments in your life? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. that's right. Right? There, yeah, there, yeah. there are. And th- that, that may allow us sort of to think about it as... Um, um, it's utility. Uh, it um, maybe even uh, there's like um, a couple of um, theoretical ways we can sort of think about music too that might be I, I thought could be helpful. But okay. that, that's where I was well, at. Well, well yeah, I, it but, seems to me that it, it has a big impact <clears throat> on our lives. Um, probably more for some than others, but across the board, it has some sort of impact. But if you're talking about developmental stages in our life, there, there was a certain group of sounds and music that was you know sort of adjacent to those events in our lives and it probably has some effect on how we recall those events Mm -hmm. so when you think back to a certain time there's a certain Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, soundtrack co- collection, of, yeah, soundtrack <laughs> yeah. with all the music. Yeah. So, yeah. so you, you think that's Which, true? It, it I is. do, I do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like for instance, I, I don't know if you realize this, but one of the songs that I associate most with my wedding night, "The Wheels on the Bus Go Round and Round." <laughs> Just whenever I hear that song, I, <laughs> wow, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Or the wheels come off the bus is <laughs> yeah. what I was kind of thinking, but I'm not sure. But <laughs> keen train yeah. kept rolling yeah. all night long. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah, that was. The, that was that was an early. <laughs> that uh, he got married young too. I'm thinking that's what that was. But, uh, that was well, you, here's my question. Arranged said, marriage. Right? So, yeah, it was. Uh, there was some, <laughs> problem. There was some arrangements, all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was uh, a harness. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> Don't go into details, please. Here we go. Come on, Jeff. Uh, see, I'm sorry. I invited I start you to this, this thing, but here we go. This you, is what we thing. do. So what, the first question would be like, so think about the a, a, a song that you really liked. Um, it, like for many folks, um, right, you may have listened to music, but remember there was a time when you really, be, when music sort of hit. Can you remember the time when like music became something you really sort of, you know, really, really turned on to? And if you think of the songs that may have sort of occurred around that time, have you ever gone back and re-listened to them? Do they still have the same impact? Are they um, are they still important to you in the way that they uh, they may have been at that time? Well, I, I I'll jump in first, yeah, Jeff. Yeah, you, yeah. Uh, but the idea is that. Um, I think they do because it set up a marker at that particular time, and now on just about everywhere you go, they're playing the songs of the '60s, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, it's everywhere. It's ubiquitous. It's in the grocery store. It's on the everything. So it, 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 there's almost a point that these songs we remember and we really liked, and there they are playing over and over again. Okay, we're tired of that now a little bit, but the idea is that. Yeah, uh, certain music from my background seems to be uh, still played, used in commercials all mm-hmm. over the place. Well, and that's, I think, kind of sad. <laughs> when a song like... you really like is in a commercial now. For, right, you know, right. Because it can bags sound... or something like that. Yeah, just going, it connects with but, people. Um, I remember I used to be a big oldies fan, you know, mm-hmm. 50s, 60s rock and roll. Right. Got and it. then I owned a bar. Okay. That's what we played was 50s and 60s rock and roll and now I have a hard time listening to it. It's like you've done it. You've yeah, been there. And, and, and I, okay. I burned out on it because we played it all the time. So but just because it, it I was mean, over and over. Well, what, what would be day. a 50s song that would sort of like you, you would stand out when they would really sort of hook you? Oh, gosh. Some of the songs we used to listen to was like Tommy Edwards. Um, mm-hmm. It's all in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, things like that. Okay. Uh, that was, you okay. know, a good belly rubbing song you'd play in the dance floor would fill you know things belly like that. rubbing song yeah, yeah that's you know, uh yeah close that's dancing. There we go yeah. oh okay okay yeah, i said yeah, yeah. Ru- bellies rubbing together yes sir I get that. yeah yeah, yeah. Let's see you're talking to a freudian uh over here so <laughs> i guess so we yeah. where we are could, we going with this we can no, turn no, but, down that, that see, road and, in and when you when you have a dance floor in a bar and you want to get people out there you'd play you know yeah the slow music. tune that you're going to dance to and people are on the floor right and then then i remember the you know the buddy holly tunes a lot of those Mm-hmm. And, so uh, really 50s. Well, and the thing about Buddy Holly is I have an older sister, and that was her music. And so mm-hmm. that's what we'd listen to. And, and she taught me to slow dance to, okay. to mm-hmm. Tommy Edwards. So, yeah, that's, okay. you know, that's how I got influenced by that stuff. So 
I'm yeah. not going to go Freudian on that. You I'm shouldn't. Not, I'm not yeah. going to. Yeah. 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 You know, somebody has to teach how to slow dance. So if you date, you know, you can do. Well, here's that. the thing. See, I, I grew up <laughs> in an age when, when slow dance, because because you're talking about the music that because now I'm going to the grocery store and I'm hearing. I grew up in the late '70s, '80s. And so I've gone into the grocery store, and there's a band called the Pixies, for instance, that sure. launched right about um, when I was about 18, 19, maybe, maybe a little older, but it's 87, so I guess I was, I might have been 19, and um, uh, I heard a Pixies song in the grocery store. <laughs> I'm thinking, what's oh, that? Oh, man. <laughs> what's that? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I, I was just in the other day, and there was Steve Winwood mm-hmm. playing. Really? Yeah. What, what were so, they playing? Uh, I've forgotten the tune now, Ark but it was from one of his... Well, they do play that <laughs> they one. They do a lot, yes. Ark the Diver, yeah. That's yeah. from a, a you know a, a later album, but yes. there were some earlier ones, too. So it's it's just amazing that how this is still in this culture and still kind of in the atmosphere everywhere you go. Sure. I'm sure. not sure the impact of that. Mm-hmm. Well, well, some folks like when you talk about burnout on the, on certain sounds, like um, I can think of like um, I probably really began to thinking about music, and I, I guess I was I was about in '78. I was I was 12, so I rem- maybe 13, 79. I remember starting to listen to music, and there were albums that my sister had sort of left. And one of the first that I remember, really remember listening to a great deal of was the Moody Blues in Search of the Lost Court. Sure. And so, you know, and, uh, and yeah. there was, um, I think it was um, maybe Sticks Paradise Theater, I think. One of those mm-hmm. early Sticks albums. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's and the so, 70s, um, for sure. When I, uh, when I go back and listen to the Moody Blues can hold up, but the Sticks... I remember really being obsessed right. when I was a kid, but I go back and I'm a little cringy because don't. <laughs> I'm like, right. I do not. Uh, you know, that's a little. That's that's a little much. Um, so 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 maybe um, m- maybe some of this loses its allure and luster. I don't know. Maybe <clears throat> yeah. I, I I think so. Uh, but but there's probably those go-to songs that that we all have somewhere on our list now on our device, uh, in the car, wherever you play uh, music that that still holds up over over time. But now it's more of not just one song, but it's a collection or it's mm-hmm. different groups. Sure. And so I've got a playlist sure. now. Playlists okay. were not a thing back in the day. Well, there were mixtapes. Mixtapes. Right. Oh yes. I, yeah. I'm talking to prior to mixtapes. You know there was nothing yeah uh, you know I, because it, at one point i, I think um, my first music was uh i got a record player okay and didn't have met many records so no. there were 45s yes right yes. oh yeah spindle in the middle and yep. then there's the uh, album when you lucky enough to get an album and, and it just save up and buy a 45 and you know right. beatles day tripper yeah, you know. and, and here in Columbus we had Flipside Records oh, yes. that you could find yeah. the most obscure albums out there, but they still had 45, uh, so uh, days gone by. Uh, I apologize, so we're getting too far back. Well, I, I remember um, walking with my friend Mark to the Big K, because he lived in this bigger town. He was 14 miles, so he lived in a town that actually had, well, stores. Stores. And so uh, <laughs> I remember he and I would walk to the Big K, and he would look at 45s. Like, he would look in for, and there would be a section of 45s, oh, yeah. and they'd all be in the little sleeves, and you'd find, yeah. you know, what... Uh, and there was an A side and a B side yes, on all yes, 45s. Yes. There was the one uh, recording you wanted, but then they had to yeah, tolerate this had other... Fill the other, other side, through, yes. Right? Yeah. And now and then, some band would put a good song on both sides. Yeah, Beatles did that. Yeah, as a matter the Beatles fact, did. You know, yeah, they had the number one hits of the B side. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so a really I, good band would 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 stretch on a B side. You'd, you'd hear things you 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 know. And it's funny because because like I, I grew up in a time when um, I punk had just hit, and so there was a we were talking about my favorite band in the world a little while ago, Wire, yep. and. Um, for a time, particularly in the underground and in, in indie, to be popular was to be bad. Right. Mm, so right. it goes back to your thing. If if people liked it, it sucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if if you made a lot of money, then you you know, which kind of went against being able to eat. But uh, <laughs> but but you. Popularity was not, it was, you know, that was selling out. Mm-hmm. That's and, right. Mm-hmm. That's right. You had so, to find the most obscure, you know, revolt against the uh, man. The man. Of the man right. always. The man. Yeah. So that was, yeah. and I, I grew up in an era where um, the 60s was distrusted. So it was like hippies were the worst thing in the world. So, like, you know, right. like uh, the lead singer of, of uh, Sex Pistols, 
was it they invited him to join the band because he had a t-shirt and it was a Pink Floyd t-shirt that he just put in lipstick I hate over the, the band <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what got him the gig right because right. outrageous you, you, you go just, against the yeah. grain right which he you know he hated, which was odd because of all Pink Floyd really weren't the kind of band that you could say I hate them yes yeah, <laughs> really but and he probably didn't really hate them he was just being a schmuck but there, there were certain bands like you know like uh for a while, if in Britain, the Beatles were often the target. Um, oh, sure. Um, these bands that were sort of, you know. It, it, yeah, progressed out of the pop into this, uh, they're doing their own thing, they're doing something different, probably along that same line that with well, the others you talked about. They sort of sort of helped usher in, you know, Pink Floyd, bands like that. Uh, it, psychedelia became something that, but um, in the 80s, uh, particularly, like I, I, you mentioned uh, records, but and we always. I came around the time when CDs became a thing, so records were out. Right. Uh, and I, I owned some records and cassettes for a while, then CDs. Yeah. But um, you no would, no eight tracks. Anybody? Geez, anyone? I, anyone? Mine are okay, gone now. Oh, I, I, eight tracks, but, yeah. I apologize for being old. <laughs> but uh, I remember an eight track of uh, of. ABBA, an ABBA album called <laughs> Voulez Vu, I think, was we had on a track, and there was a built-in a track player on that. We had one of those giant all-in-one <laughs> wood. Yes. Uh, yeah, had a record yeah. player in it, a track player, <laughs> yes. and then uh, you know, I remember that the huge console. Oh, yeah, it was you a had console. console. Yes, yeah, yeah. you play. Uh, right. I remember those. So those were good days, but um, uh, obscurity was was key. Um, college radio was big. Mm. Like how you learned about things, where you turn on the college radio, and and it was ninety point, was it ninety point one, I okay. think was was at UT, and um, you could listen, you would sort of see, it, you'd hear like you know like band, and and the their motto was if if you've heard it before, we're not doing our job, <laughs> and so it literally was just a, I oh can't. yeah, I want to hear that song again. No, we don't. You can't. Well, you can't. We don't play short the, playlist. What? It's not you know all new. And it would be like the most like I remember. Uh, there's a there's a label out of New Zealand called Flying Nun. And for a while there, they, I don't know if you heard a lot of Lou Reed or Velvet Underground mm -hmm. or, but th they said they had that sort of a jangly lo-fi sort of um, sound to them. And, and there were all these bands coming off the Flying Nun label. And so you were, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd just, you'd try to find some, and you know, you couldn't, you'd have to buy them on import. Like I remember going to a a, a store in, um, in Knoxville and you'd go to the import section because you wouldn't go to anywhere. Why would you go anywhere else? But you wouldn't go to well, import. Okay. And li even at the time, like I, I mentioned, the band Wire, I bought one of their albums for twenty five bucks, and this was like nineteen eighty eight. That's a lot. That's a lot. Of money right there back so in the day, so it was a little like you know, like you know, my whole paycheck from Long John Silver's. <laughs> just wanted to find this. this uh, <laughs> always know. a good. Always wait for the reference, yes. Jeff. Let me just say that it, it never happened, but still, it's a good reference. It's a great right? one. Right, yeah. There we go. And so you know, I, I'm smelling like fried fish I'm walking into the store, and that's but you know, I walk out with this thing. I then the band called Bauhaus. They were like, mm -hmm. this, they mm -hmm. were an early goth band. And I remember buying one of the, an import, their first album. Again, it was like 25, 30 bucks. Like, you know, you'd buy it and then you'd go home and sort of, you know, you'd, 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 you'd sort of like uh, with pulling the sword from the stone. You'd, you'd found this, this you know, is it. and then you go home, do you go back to your small Southern town where, you know, everybody is, you know, even your mom does smokeless tobacco and they're uh, you know <laughs> chasing a pig in the backyard right right just yeah, another day <laughs> kill some chickens for dinner oh and, my goodness but All me right, i'm different because i got this Bauhaus album mm -hmm. so in some ways it sort of allowed you to sort of generate an identity and right. to create a sense of self and it's interesting we talk about this because you guys probably have a slightly different cultural reference to music in a way, right? Or, or am I wrong? Because you mentioned the sure. '60s. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. that was See, um, in in my early days. Of course, I was playing in bands because everybody 
played in the band. Everybody on the block, everybody on the next block, they all had a band. Sure, we put it sure. together and started playing. The Unless you had a banjo where I'm from, you didn't play in the band. That's right. No banjos. Uh, <laughs> scary. Yeah. Remember the guy moved in with the electric guitar and the Fender amp, and that changed everything that, for us. Oh, so yeah. Mm-hmm. The way. We, we were on bikes playing baseball until he showed up with this uh, electric guitar, right? And it changed everything. I also remember that there, there were, you know, we moved to the albums, and the albums kind of thing was – uh, is there one good song, or Often that was all the, the rest way, of them yeah. are bad? Yeah. All those kind of things that we, that's coming to mind now. But back in those times, we played the whole album side. Sure. So you got all of those songs in there. That's the way the the turntables were set sure. up. You didn't just play this one no, song. No, no, no. Like now, when you have a playlist, you play your song. Those kind of things. But anyway, I just have to mention that. But yeah, so there, it was a different time. Played in a band, played the music that was on the radio, and then progressed from there. Mm-hmm. So you had to keep up because if you were playing in clubs, or you, you played for money, you played where you mm-hmm. you go where the money was. So you cracked up some boxcar Willie. That's we, really did what not, you we did not. We did not play no, yeah. boxcar <laughs> Willie. But uh, hang on, every, Sloopy. Everything. <laughs> that's that's, that's what every band. As a did. matter of fact, so how did, did we, you know? It was we were a garage, okay. garage band that did that too. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah, so you I, it. So that culture was, you know, mm-hmm. informed us, uh, and we were kind of connected to what was playing and what was popular in a way. Okay. So okay. that wasn't always the best music, but it's what people wanted to hear. So and that's mm-hmm. what, and also what we could play. Mm-hmm. By the way, listen. So think right about it. Your, your trajectory seems to be being in bands. It was a communal activity. It uh, it was it, sort of w- within a larger cultural context. Post '60s, uh, when disco hit, for instance, suddenly that communal element and the hedonistic element was cranked up. Um, and then I think that. Um, there were, particularly in Great Britain, where there was the economic crash, and there were all these folks out of work, and uh, the music that, that, that sort of gave spawned punk was sort of um, in-your-face, um, uh, anti-collective in all sorts of ways, and uh, like, but this probably isn't for everybody because I'm an obsessive neurotic, but right. uh, there's a book called my, my, Our Band Could Save Your Life. And so there was this notion that you could find something very important in music and in the band and in the culture and the genre it was part of. So, for instance, when you bought an album, you didn't think of singles because it was like a novel. You listened to it, every bit of it, and you, you knew who did the cover art, who produced it, who right. uh, you, right. knew, you knew who, 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 were, who influenced this band so that you could sort of draw a tree and then begin to move backwards to be able to find things. And so it was like this. It was um, like I remember the first time I'd ever heard Wire was um, I was at UT and there was a, a guy who played in a band called C7 States and he was a drummer. And he was uh, okay. And if you're around, if you're from Tennessee, or right. from, you know. I think I know that reference. <laughs> the reference, the sign. C7 yeah, states, right. right of the barns yeah. out yes. there. Yes. So they're good. We call C, and they were actually pretty good. And um, this is when REM really hit big. So there was this sudden uh, uh, bubbling in the underground. And so he he had this great record collection. And so he loaned me three records. He loaned me um, a Peter Murphy, who was the lead singer of Bauhaus solo album. He loaned me a um, the Soft Boys, which was an underground. Um, it was called Paisley Underground. It was sort of uh, the '60s filtered through Sid Barrett area Pink Floyd from Great Britain. Robin Hitchcock went on to sort of keep doing things, but the Soft Boys existed. For Soft Boys existed. They were named for I think a, uh, a William Burroughs reference, and then a Wire album. Mm-hmm. And so I remember taking them home, and you know, you, you before you put them on, you. You look at the album cover. You yes, turn it over. It was sure. the album cover. Who, yes. uh, who did this? Where that? You, you you scrutinize the members of the band, and I think you and I talked about this before. That mm-hmm. like I remember as a kid, when we first uh, you know we we used to have like two and a half channels. First off, we're up in the mountains, and so you <laughs> you didn't get much. <laughs> and uh, you know one of those channels was just some guy you know uh, blowing into a jug. <laughs> that was all you got. And. Uh, don't remember that channel, but yeah, but yeah it was, <laughs> didn't get that where I was. Yes. Boxcar Willie would have been, would have been, that, would have been the top been, of the right. improvement. Right. Yeah, that right. would have been like you know, but if, he, if Boxcar really only played the jug. Um, but I remember turning the in the, the, there. It was called Night Flight, and this was before MTV. So Night Flight came on and it played videos and right. videos that already started to exist and whatnot. And okay, I remember. Um, uh, Back to back, they would play different things, and they they played a Van Halen video. Uh, I think it was a live 
them of them playing the Kings cover, you really got me or whatever. And and then they played um, the Talking Heads song. Um, um, course the same as it ever was mm-hmm. uh, um, uh, I'll think of the end of the song but they played it and I remember thinking to myself good God I am not David Lee Roth I'm David B- Byrne right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am not okay. I'm not going to be that and I don't really kind of wouldn't want to be that but oh no what do I do with this right and and that it so it, it became a way of 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 self-definition it set the parameters of of and, and I assume that I think this happens for all of us to a degree right because you identified with a rock musician or maybe a sports somebody or whatever but it right. began that process of identification you begin to sort of and I maybe I'm wrong but certainly in the in the 80s and underground culture and whatnot Music was this notion of this is how you could be um, true to yourself. This is how you could be part of a political movement or an artistic movement, and you could define yourself accordingly. And mm-hmm. um, the Talking Heads were like that. Their early albums were filled with this neurotic energy and this sense, you know, like uh, if uh, Van Halen were um, were about um, the power of sexuality and this, you know, exaggerating uh, your uh, your your sexual prowess and whatnot. The talking Heads were about this. Sex stuff is scary. <laughs> I right. mean, it was it was a whole different sort of like that, that. You know, why is my body doing this? And why are people expecting me to? You know, it was a completely different sort of. You know, and it couldn't possibly be popular. And and Talking Heads at some point sort of became. They had begin to have hits, but their first three three or four albums were woefully obscure right they were not you know they were well i think too as you as you were talking i I was thinking that um you is a cultural thing because you sort of found the other people in your group that like the same group or same album and all of that your tribe so it became your tribe yeah yeah. you can define your tribe if somebody you know like if um so if you i would even ask what kind of music do you like and that would allow me to determine if these yes. are people I could trust. Could I hang this? with them? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's yeah. almost like a personality profile. Let me now give what? you a list. Yeah, that's, uh, what do you listen to? No, we don't like you because you're not with the Zeppelin crew. Well, uh, and, so that kind of thing. You know, and I was thinking about uh, when Zeppelin first came out. I mean, not everybody was into Zeppelin. No, it took a woman up to yes, Zeppelin, it did. did it? Uh, yes, it and, really did. you know, that first album was great, great stuff. I mean, they, they went so far, but... I think you made a great point, Dan, when those were the guys you hung with, the same mm-hmm. people that like the same, have, yeah. you know, and like when Bowie came out, and we'd all hang around. And, and, right, and I found I found in the group, too, that um, somebody would introduce a new group, and I would go, mm, no, I, I just, but then I had to kind of, if I'm going to fit in. I better gonna, like I, this. I've yeah. got to figure this thing <laughs> we're out. We're going to listen to this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. Yeah. I'm and gonna, it turned out they were probably right, and I was yeah. just uh, too Well, forward. you just had to get there. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah like when somebody in, introduced the washboard into that guy, that uh, Jug Guys band. <laughs> <laughs> it was a while. It, to, they weren't ready. <laughs> that is, like, this that is, is uh, <laughs> point taken right there. Um, it was... Yeah, so you've got to you've got to kind of fit into the group, and maybe your taste is going to change over a period of time with some things that are introduced. But, and but that's, t- that's what music was all about: is a new thing coming up. Oh yeah, with the yeah, new yeah, thing. Yeah, right? But yeah. well, and think about how, it, it, in some ways, it sort of shepherds and ushers in the possibility of integrating parts of yourself. Not only is it social, but there's the sexual. There's all these sorts of things that you sort of like. You mentioned Led Zeppelin; they were. They were they they in some ways helped along with Black Sabbath sort of gave birth to heavy metal. Mm-hmm. I mean they right. were yes. sort of you know sort of that, taking yeah. the blues and exaggerating them in ways that you know um, yeah, and uh, what was it uh, their I think it was Pete Townsend or Keith Moon gave them their name because he said uh, he heard them play lie or heard him on a show and said man this is going to sink like a lead balloon <laughs> and <laughs> okay there we go for predictions his, right I but, mean, uh, uh, not always uh, the the case <laughs> that might have been, yeah he, he may have been joking but they they, they, they took but, that as a as, as a uh, a sign that you know that uh I, I you know i think i think too that that's that there's emotion that are connected with music and it's sort of a feeling uh that you have connected to 
Well, not only the music itself, but the event that you're at or the situation. You see them in concert as opposed to at home. Right, you know, right, right. With right. headphones on at, you know, at two in the morning. And, as a teenager, that was sort of a, you, you, those headphone moments. You would sort of, I remember right. hearing, right. Um, there's a band called the Jesus and Mary Chain. Mm-hmm. And uh, their music sounds Jeff, a little... did you just say, yes, you have that collection? No, home? I don't have that okay, collection, right, but I remember it. them. I remember them, yes. All right. And <laughs> it, it sounds a little like if you, if you cross the Beach Boys with a chainsaw. No, okay, <laughs> so, that, that happens. <laughs> so there's these sort of like, there, there, there are these sort of, you know, Beach Boy-esque, Beatlesque melodies buried under just layers of feedback. It's like, right. it's like a, right you know, it's, and, and so there's a song they have called You'll never understand me. I remember as a teenager listening to that. You're right. Sounds no one's true. ever gonna Sounds understand me. Well. That's right. <laughs> and it and was that was the point. Man. It was. You know, it was like, and I, I saw them. Uh, I've seen them a concert a couple of times. And uh, first time I saw them was, I saw them at uh, in Knoxville, Tennessee, in 1990. Okay. And uh, I guess I was. There's a memory right yeah, there for you. Right. I guess I was 19 when okay. I saw them, maybe 20. <laughs> and um, so they come into uh, the Knoxville theater and. And the opening band was Nine Inch Nails. And so it was yeah. already a little raucous because the lead singer, Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails, grabbed the guitarist by the hair and started dragging him around the stage. And I was oh. like, we are not in Kansas we are, anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're out there now. But when the Jesus and Mary chain came on, first off, before they came on, the, the whole venue filled with smoke. I'm like, what is this? And suddenly I noticed that they were turning all the lights like toward us. And so when they came, it, when they came on, uh, well, first off, before they came on, you were they blinded. Played, you couldn't see. Right? Well, right, that, so. that that was about to happen. They played a video of a song that I'd never heard from them, and they played. I was like, "Why are they playing a video before they come on?" And then the song goes off, smoke rolls in, and suddenly the lights start going in your eyes, so you can't see. You're being disoriented, and the band is just a wall of feedback. You can't tell when the next song begins or ends, and they don't speak. The lead singer sort of sort of just draped over the uh, the uh, and he's ah, 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 and they're just you know whatever and they only play for like 30 minutes right <laughs> and and at one point i sort of just turn and see what everybody's doing and everybody's got their mouths open they're going my god what is what, this what is <laughs> and some people are scared it's happening and then suddenly it stops and somehow the smoke is gone and they disappeared and we all just sort of file numbly out of theater that was it what was Concert that over. and then I, I remember you know my girlfriend at the time and she was like oh god it was horrible what was that <laughs> and i thought to myself that is the greatest That's thing the I've greatest ever seen. <laughs> that was literally it was like wow that was yeah that was perfect. That, yes. Okay. <laughs> and you knew she wasn't for you. And she wasn't. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That didn't we were, last long, did Because my, my wife actually has seen, seen them twice with me, and she's a Jesus and Mary Chain fan. So that what that is a, uh, okay. there's a point there. There's a compatibility yeah. factor there. I will there. say they seem thing. to have learned how to play instruments in the time. In the Since end, then. Time. Yes, yes. Or maybe they... Because they're, they're, even though the feedback is still there, there is, you know, they're... They move the guitars away from the speakers. Uh, <laughs> there so was. That, uh, and when I say feedback, happens. I mean ear-piercing, not oh, yeah. like, I mean like like this shrill, oh, make, like a dentist drill. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what it sounds like. It sounds like like if somebody amplified a dentist drill. Would you repeat drill. that? Because my hearing is gone now <laughs> because me? of all of that. So, uh, it was... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy! <laughs> okay, no, that that was a moment that changed things for you. It was. All right. Yeah. So, and yeah. you identified with that sort of genre of music. Well, right? see, but the, the, m- m- that I think maybe because you guys play an instrument, I might look for something. Di- and one way to define music is organized sound that it that um, uh, generates um, the seeking of meaning. So okay. I say that because it is very broad. I spend lots of time listening to drones and ambient. And this morning I was listening to a band called Autecker. And um, it's one of their songs is, well, they have one song that's 42 minutes, but 27 minutes of what sounds a little like somebody might have um, 
might have dropped to their synthesizers in a bathtub. It's really <laughs> not. There's no melody per se. Right, of course. There are repetitive things going on within it, and so I often seek out that, like, right. like um, if if it is too melodic or too within. Um, uh, the lines I can often, and unless it's something like like I'm a huge Bob Dylan fan, but I find the feedback in his voice, like there's you know like a there's a Dennis drill in there. It's when he speaks, uh, but it's and, and lyrically too. I think there's also something that's the, the, of the Dennis drill there too. But my guess is you guys might approach music differently, like like well, there might I'd, be I'd, yeah uh, maybe so. Um, I, you know, the, but, but we started talking about the early introductions to the music that we listened to back in the day and then the progression through this, and now we're here today. So you can have a really eclectic uh, collection. I mean, you saw my playlist up there. I mean, mm-hmm. everybody from classic to country to, you mm-hmm. know, obscure to ambient stuff mm-hmm. is there. I, I play some ambient music, that, those kind of things. So, But every once in a while, I like that melody and Mm -hmm. the verse and the chorus coming up and it's Mm -hmm. repetitive and it sounds good and maybe it makes an emotional connection in different ways and we need various levels of that emotional reaction to music well, I'm, I'm glad you that. mentioned that because I didn't get a chance to because because <laughs> he's going to talk about emotions and this this is a good yeah, segue okay. to, to, to the back, psychological yeah. elements of it. But, but I was going to ask you about like you, you may look for something slightly different in the in the the organized sounds. Well, you know, and I have to go back to the music I was listening to was very pop, mm-hmm. so I was thinking <laughs> right. cow cells. Uh, right. Bands like that, you know, things that you don't even want. To. And then two it, verses, a chorus, and a verse, yes, and it's over. And right? that was it. Yeah, <laughs> there were three-minute songs and, and <laughs> things of that nature. And then later, it was what we would call today old country. That mm-hmm. was my high school years. Mm-hmm. Was listening mm-hmm. to Buck Owens and, and oh, yeah. Waylon yeah, yeah. and, and people like that. Sure. And, and I was really immersed in that. It was different than everybody else because everybody else was getting into the heavy metal stuff at that point, and I was going country, mm-hmm. and and so it was different. But when you talk about that emotional part, I mm-hmm. remember those periods in my life when you were listening to this or you were dating her, and this, and it, and it was the soundtracks of our lives. Yeah, and, I mean that, that's kind yeah. of the phrase, isn't it? Yeah, that we yeah. have that. So. And, and uh, you know, one of the first real concerts I went to was Jethro Tull. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. back '72. Uh, Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And we just had missed the Stones. They had been there the week before. You know. Okay. So, so it's yeah. one of those. Well, you things. can you can probably go back and I mean, you can probably next week go find the Stones. Uh, uh, They're on the road again. again. Like, yes. Once again. Either. Yeah. Tall, not Tull, so much. No, but, but he's uh, he's trying. You know. I just the fact that there was an uh, he's thinking about uh, starting Jethro Tall back up. He said mm-hmm. he's 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 not sure about it, but uh, yeah, because he yeah. was he came. I don't. Did he come here? He was in um, Macon. Macon. Saw him in Macon when he came. Yeah, because yeah. back in yeah. the day, some okay. 70s. Well, no, but, okay. but, but he came here like recently. Like he's touring with um, with like uh, with a, a symphony yeah, or I think I've heard that something yeah, like that. I'm not sure. And uh, something. Yeah. 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 Mm. But, but, but we talk about it because because we're. we're, we're should talk about some mental health sort of things, right? Oh, so we yeah, should, you know. So yeah, and that's why I, that's why I was introducing the, the the whole idea of emotions because there's something called music therapy out there. There I don't you know go. If we want to go down that there you road, go. but uh, well, certainly like that. So it does have I, an effect emotionally on us. There's this guy. Ever heard of a Jacques Panksepp? No. Can't say that I have. Never, never hung out with this guy. No. Okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. Jeff, Jeff. Sometimes I wonder if he's making up these names <laughs> oh, he brings in so, here because they're so does, far I out. I know I'm not going to know this, right? So I think he's he free won to a, do that. I think he won a Nobel Prize. I'm oh, not okay. Sure. Well, in have. that case, I look <laughs> well, like then, a, I look like go. I don't know. Here what we I'm sit. Talking about. <laughs> Apologize <laughs> once again. Here we but go. But it's okay. It's okay. I think <laughs> he, he's one of the. Um, he's the first person to come up with what's known as the um, bottom up. Um, version of neurology that the idea that emotions come first and then thinking after them and he's one of the uh, guys who, who generated the idea of uh, of, of aff- affective neuroscience and so it's sort of and his claim to fame is he's known as the rat tickler if you go on youtube you can see this okay and um, there you go rat got a lot of hits on I like youtube that. There, right? yeah. okay, well here we go. he we'll found know. out that rats laugh if you tickle them 
we don't hear it because it's high pitched. But rats have emotions. They they laugh. They cry. And so suddenly there's this notion that, that, that you know, uh, affect is central. And as we move down the phylogenic spectrum, that we see its, its centrality, is, it, it's, it, it, there is a significant centrality to affect. So we thought, well, we could look at the brain, and we could look at the brain and the emotions, and there, he has seven subsystems that sort of that are interacting. And in, uh, I'm not going to remember them all. Maybe I will. Let's see if I can. It's seeking, uh, rage care, lust, fear, play. There's one more. Um, no, it's pretty good but, recall right there. Yeah, so I'll, get I'll, points. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, there, there's another one. But in, in a good example of the seeking system, ever had a dog? Yeah, still do. Dogs? Yeah, walked the dog this morning. The seeking system of a dog. What is a dog, the first thing you do, it goes outside... Right, right. Yep. That's right, that right. seeking system. So, Panksepp says that you know, in all all animal mammals at least, we have we have this. In, that there is a neurological substrate. There are different parts of the brain that sort of go into this, and and there are different parts. So right. they're seeking, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All of us know rage. Yep. You know, you guys are hanging out with me, so you don't know about lust. Yep. Oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> I, I agree too quickly, Jeff. I mean, I, I do that sometimes. It's for the You're right on top of line. I'm like, well, oh, no, no, no. That's, that's not it. it. Just set up. <laughs> but, and, and notice how care and lust are actually different things. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that nurturance and care. But anytime we're engaged in any activity, there's an overlap in these systems. So there's affect complexity. Sure. So there is, you know, like I was, uh, um, I went, I think I mentioned this, and when I, I went to, I did this ethics presentation at um, St. Simon's. Have you been to the St. Simon's Islands? Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. So it's, um, I'm there, and I, I walk out, I get there, and it's it's kind of cold and a little rainy, but there's a woman and a dog on the beach, and she's throwing. And I say to myself, yeah. as I'm watching this, how many of Panksepp's subsystems are currently at play in this moment? Okay. As one would do, right? Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well uh, uh, now. <laughs> so, you know, so think about all the things. Just in playing with your dog, there's the seeking system of the dog and probably the, the human being as well. There's play in both. Mm-hmm. There's care and nurturance. Maybe lust, but I wasn't going to go there. But <laughs> right, right. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. It's, uh, it See, wasn't like, there. Here we go. It wasn't there. <laughs> I but, uh, hope it wasn't there. But you can I'm think not of editing anything <laughs> out. I'm you should. Tell you you that, should. Right? I mean, it's, it's a not podcast. The, it's not you know, what we're going to do. <laughs> it happened. All right. There we go. So there are all these different substances to play, right? So they're there and they're happening. And and part of what we can think about is is mental health is the capacity for subjective complexity. To have as much overlap and less conflict, because some folks, mm-hmm. you know, would have. And, and I'm going to go off the rail here, and you're probably not going to like this. Okay, here but, we go. Uh, but not for the instance, uh, there was some studies Lou Borsky, I think, did in the 70s and 80s about um, when women are breastfeeding, they inadvertently may experience some sexual sensation. Mm-hmm. I've heard that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, there's probably don't you know don't Google this because it'll take you to some websites you don't want to see right. or you but, might want to see <laughs> or you might and then you're down the rabbit hole and the day's over and, yeah yes, yes. okay and uh, <laughs> yeah and uh, I'm there were lots of jokes there but I'm editing oh, oh boy, good I'm editing. good good keep <laughs> I'm going I'm tapping the brain keep going. inhibiting <laughs> that's he's, uh, he's, that, 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 he's that's learning a good learning some we have to be able to inhibit and to be able to deal with these subsystems but women who would have conflict around that would could could often engage it would then engage different subsystems rage for instance annoyance because they're experiencing something that they don't allow themselves to have some awareness and acceptance of so they can move on from it mm. so our capacity to be able to move and to have this um this complexity of affect experience is very important right mm-hmm. sure. And uh, the reason I bring this whole thing up is, is that even though that with the woman playing with the dog was exp- both her and the dog are experiencing these, and in some ways these systems are being triggered by each other, and these often happen in in any sort of social context. I think about this in terms of music. So I was sort of asking you guys, like, what do you look for in music? Right. And I wonder. I think that 
we may get different things from because you mentioned the playlist. So, sure. for instance, a country song. And by the way, I don't know if you realize this, but now that there are self-driving cars, yes. there's going to be a song about a truck leaving a guy <laughs> in country music. Ooh. As it just goes off. That's okay. right. Okay. It's a lot of, t- it opens a lot of doors. <laughs> it does. Start thing. writing okay. this afternoon. <laughs> right, My right. truck left me and took the dog. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to be. Uh, it has to be in the rain <laughs> at the train station. David Allen <laughs> Cole right, comes right. back. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but think about how different maybe it's like country might move. Uh, you know that that there is um, uh, it it triggers the um, the 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 negative side of the care syst- of of that care subsystem or you know the blues for instance like um, mm-hmm. we, we uh, these are songs that somehow are miserable but make us feel good in the act of listening to them right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so. Right. So they do something in, in with with these subsystems, and so music has the capacity, partly because its level of abstraction, even if it has lyrics, most folks don't listen to lyrics. There was some recent study where they okay. had people list their favorite songs and then see if they knew the lyrics. They didn't, you know. Now that doesn't mean they don't register the lyrics. Just like you may not remember the things that your mom would say to you as she tucked you into bed, or you may not remember the things that your uh, friends and word for word, the impact of those words are, are, are can be registered. And again, this goes back to this notion of this bottom up. Doesn't mean that you have to be engaged lexically in these things to have some, but they're there. But um, so the songs. They they uh, j- different genre like heavy metal friends because you mentioned and you you were listening to country when folks were listening heavy metal probably might scratch different inches may may pull from different subs for instance you may not while listening to um, a song about your truck leaving you have the same experience about a song about Vikings you know destroying a village that would be viking death metal if you like amon amarth i don't know if you're into swedish no all, <laughs> all about amon amarth okay yes. <laughs> okay I, I the album. sorry I, <laughs> too <yeah>. revealing <laughs> okay and it's, i uh, i uh, <laughs> I, I was in a mosh pit in, in a Montemarth, and someone knocked me down and took my T-shirt. That's a different. That's a long. That's a different. Wow! Thing. Wow! But, that's a, but, that's, uh, a, that's a that's a that's a full episode we got to come back to at some point. But, but otherwise, but so so it, they scratch. So your playlist. Maybe the reason we make playlist is so that we can hit as many of those. Right. That, yeah. Wow. Possible. Maybe. I, I think you okay. Get, I Maybe think you're onto something there because I mean, what? Uh, okay. You you've got a Pandora playlist or some other iTunes or Prime Music <laughs> or Google. You know all those things. So what do you choose from that playlist at that moment in time? I mean, okay, you scroll through, no. Mm-hmm. Credence Clearwater, no. Amon Marth, no. <laughs> you know, you keep going. Oh, country, George Jones well, from there. I'm but, but sad today. I, I, I don't would, know. I was thinking, now that you said, remember when you used to do those mixtapes for a girl? Yes. Yeah. And That's you, the only time I've ever done one. I remember the mixtape I made for this girl who was in my psychology class. Okay. And... Uh, you know, and, and what were you trying to do when you made that tape? Well, I, I not the you, ultimate goal. I don't imp- mean that impress the girl. Probably, <laughs> not, yes, right? but but what were you doing? I, I well, that one of those that would be both uh, that that may be uh, both seeking and lust subsystems, right? So there's at least there are a couple of things, but there is an an element of and the the way you described it was for me my mixtape in some way was an active display just like yes the, just like bird, male birds yes. have the, f- the, f- the feathers right, right. exactly it was, it was an example this is me yeah. yeah my emotional i remember i put uh, a new order uh, everything's gone green which is an obscure it's right after their lead singer killed themselves killed themselves and they became new order there's this this remarkably depressing song which by the way if you've ever listened to joy division the lead singer killed himself and i remember they were interviewing one of the the guitarists like you know we we just didn't see that coming i thought you've been playing the man listening to this guy for years yeah and you missed it all you never (laughs) heard it were you listening to what this guy was saying (laughs) no they didn't listen to the lyrics either (laughs) but but that's it and that's what i was going for when you were creating that tape you were putting you out there Mm -hmm. this is how i'm feeling this is what i you know Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, it's, and, it's sort of a, almost and, a resume in that yes. moment for the other person to get to know who you are. Right? And, and I didn't ever use the term display, but that's exactly what it was. Right. And isn't your list now on Pandora kind of the same way? This is me. This is who I am. 
This well, is what I'm it, feeling. It should have been private until he pulled it up on the, uh, <laughs> on the screen. There, Mike's so. list. <laughs> now You're I'm getting psychoanalyzed. The There's a lot of Tiny Tim on this. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I'm not going to tell for the that tulips is with me. True. Yes. I'm not sure what, what that means. One hit wonders are on there. That's <laughs> yeah. for sure. Yeah, that's right. a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny. Bob Dylan's a huge Tiny Tim fan. Uh, <laughs> if you, uh, he really is. But. Um, uh, pre-war music he's really recently his albums have been really informed by that but so m maybe then the mixtape is a little like the bird displaying its feathers in front of a mirror mm -hmm. maybe there's something it's 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 sort of a display solipsism and i wonder what itch that scratches because you're right nowadays like i like now that i'm 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 married i don't m make I will attempt to play a song for my wife, but but if she doesn't like it, it hurts my feelings so yes. much that I literally just stop. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Yeah, doesn't like, it? Oh man! Because yeah. again, you're doing the same you, thing. You don't love you're me putting, anymore. You're, oh, but happened? you're putting you out there yes, again. This is so you know. Yeah, look uh, what I'm feeling here. And she yeah, just, put know. everything on the line, right? <laughs> right, okay. right. Wow. But but it's so so the mixtape. It is it, it is a a reveal, a resume, a display. Right. It is you know. This is how. Oh, I'm feeling. Yeah. This, yeah. Right. Well, I want to know how we control this a little bit because I kind of think, okay, I've got the playlist. I'm going to go down. What am I feeling? What am I doing in this moment? What do I want in the background? That's too noisy. Let me put some ambient on or let me find something. So it depends on what you're doing and what's going on with you in that moment. And I, I think that's beginning to sound a little like therapy maybe. maybe in some ways we need some <laughs> comfort or something drive something this if you're exercising for example are you going to put on the slow dance <laughs> tune no you're going to put on something the one with the beat. Yeah, yeah yeah that's how you're going to do this but you can this. think about this cuz therapy there is a, there is a parallel great art introduces us to ourself right mm -hmm. it helps us to know and name parts of ourselves we otherwise couldn't reach a good relationship does that a good a good talk a good encounter with anything in some ways brings more of us to us where freud's famous statement where i was where it was there i shall be and it doesn't have to be a it can be an unthought known it doesn't have to be something that's articulated you, you just you just know it. You can feel it. Mm -hmm. We would say. Mm -hmm. I think Pangsep would say it's sort of much more right hemispheric. It's something that is pre-lexical or doesn't necessarily require uh, sequential reasoning or uh, or words to be able to do something with it. And um, so much of therapy is that right. people, you know, there's a real stress on cognitive behavioral therapy that's much more bottom down and uh, you know cognition. But good therapy has to find a way both and maybe a lean a little toward the part that's more emotion and the part that I think all art scratches, right? Like uh, Yeah, and I, I'm, <clears throat> I'm thinking too that maybe this is, we're looking for comfort. <clears throat> maybe uh, we're, we're playing a playlist, we have it available to us, we're going back to that list. It becomes therapeutic because we're familiar with it, we're comfortable with it. It's not the new album that we just bought or the new thing we haven't heard yet or somebody's turning you on to something in that way. It's like, okay, this this is my list and it brings me comfort or it fits it, into whatever I'm doing at that moment. Wouldn't that be the Panksepp's care subsystem, right? So you are looking for, because I often do go back to bands and like, in fact, I think one time back in the old days, I made a list of all these bands I liked. Remember? Yes, and we went I remember. That. I need to find that <laughs> episode was, because that was, oh, that was really interesting. I, first of all, there were uh, I don't know two hundred. There, I didn't know one hundred and ninety-eight of them. I've been listening to music for a long time, so but I had no idea. I, I was literally walking across the street, heading toward uh, lunch, and on. Uh, uh, Thursday and I was man it's already I I, I by five I, I'd been at work since 4 30 that morning so I was already tired and I started thinking about the music I liked and the bands I liked and I said I suddenly feel better I can think of my yeah. favorite bands yeah. I like the kinks mm -hmm. I like wire I like Autiker I like John Coltrane you know I'm going to, and as I'm, I'm feeling better right I'm like right, right I think that's is, the effect so that's, right but but there's also music like um there's that seeking subsystem. I think, yeah. And so there's music like I've never heard this before, or like you said, yeah. I don't know if I really like this or not, but I'm gonna keep listening. Yes, right. Yeah. And, and right. how many times have you 
purchase something. But you hated it first. And you hate it the first play through, and you go, what the heck did I <laughs> do? That's and a then, buyer's remorse or yes. something that you and have then, to deal with. And then, you know, with. like third time through, you're going, you know. And then it hits you. Yeah. It's like, wait a minute. This isn't bad. <laughs> now I know why I got this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In fact, yeah. my favorite things, like I remember the first, like because I've been talking a lot about Wire. The first time I heard them, I was like, you know, have they seen people play instruments before? <laughs> they know what, they know what that is? <laughs> I'm not sure. You know, and then you start, and like you said, but there's, there's, some, there's something here. And then it's like suddenly you fall into it. Like mm-hmm. it, it finds you. Or, and I think that's where, that's, that's a whole different sort of subsystem in a way. And then part of that, I think, is you have an emotion right now when you can't identify it. Mm-hmm. And oh, so yeah. when you play that... <clears throat> <laughs> it it really it you know hits that nerve. It really strikes that chord, and you really go, yeah, that's what I'm feeling. Yeah, that's, and, and that's I'm where so, I'm at. It, it kind of goes back to relationships too. So if you guys have a group and you're talking about them, I'm kind of processing that in in real time. I'm thinking well, maybe I ought to give that a try, and uh, it's connecting with something new. Maybe one of those subsystems you're mm-hmm. talking about, and then hey, I might like it too. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so I've been introduced to something new. Let me kind of mm-hmm. venture out, seek it, mm-hmm. try to find something yeah. new that maybe turns out, hey, pretty cool. Well, sure, I'm glad I did that. Mm-hmm. You know, well, good, good. It was, you were playing Slim Whitman, and I was thinking well, <laughs> that you know maybe when I go home, I'll I'll put on some Slim Whitman while I'm making. Cause I bet my wife, maybe, right, but I would never have thought of, or Bruce Cockburn, I'm like, I really haven't listened to I Bruce I haven't listened Cockburn. to Bruce in a long time. I yeah. wonder right, if I revisited right. that, and let's see if there's something, you know. So you're right, there is a, and that it's would be, that, that, that's, that again, that, that also triggers, so it, it does that. I like the idea that, you know, it, before I go to bed at night, I'll, I'll read and I'll listen to music. And the music I choose then is very different. Right? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. It is, uh, that's where I often choose an ambient track. Or yes. I'll, uh, sure. Your, uh, there's a jazz pianist named no Matthew Shipp. No Amon Mirth before. <laughs> not, not, but no. there was a time when I was younger that I, I might put that on before I went to bed. And right. sleep right into it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but nowadays, I'm like, no. Li- uh, no. Can't do that. Li- life is cruel enough. I don't need to bring the cruelty <laughs> to this moment. Keep it going on. <laughs> yeah, this is not. I need a, this time for rest. But, but uh, he's a pianist, Matthew Shipp, and he plays avant-garde jazz. And um, it often sounds like both of his hands are playing different songs mm-hmm. right. and that they're angry at each other. <laughs> but <laughs> but there's still something about it like, you know, like there's – I'm like, I don't know why I would want to listen to this, but there's something sort of – you know, and I, and I can – and there is comfort in that, right? So yeah. there are times – but there Familiar. are also times you might listen to music for um, – like I don't really know what I want to listen to, but I'll put this on, and then I'll find myself there, and it'll tell me something about, or I'll go, you know, I want to remember, I want to. So it, it, each time we approach music, and it may activate different parts of ourselves, and it may articulate different parts of it. That's why I like this idea of sort of thinking about those seven emotional subsystems, and how that's one way to sort of think about how we appreciate all art but particularly music because it can do so many things right it's not uh, yeah uh, I, I'm, I'm wondering too um, and there's probably some science out there uh, about how it impacts the brain you know the brain mapping idea and the, mm-hmm. um, yeah, they, they do functional MRIs with yeah, people the, the, sure. yeah the MRIs yeah. and what, yeah. what parts of the brain light up with certain types of music and those kind of things and how we process it and what we do and then I think that's that's almost the cognitive side of it and you got the emotional side of it so music covers a lot of territory for our lives well there was a recent doing. study where they were showing letting people listen to death metal and whatnot and the idea does this make them violent and then i forget how what they did is they then oh, yeah. exposed them to you know flowers or puppies and asked them what they felt <laughs> and it had the opposite effects of making them violent like okay they got they, it out well, maybe that's it, because I can think of like uh, what a friend of mine uh, died a while back, and uh, whenever I'm in a place of grief, I, I just can't listen to music. Um, and so there was this this blackout period, and then I'm I'm at the gym, and I'm like, okay, uh, I, I think it was down in my basement. I'm gonna listen to something. And for a while there, all I listened was the darkest, blackest, meanest mm. death metal, black metal yeah, you can imagine. Yeah. Okay. And okay. often, you know, um, there's a lyric where he said, and the storm took um, everything, and the storm took nothing. 
And something about that lyric is this guy's like, you know, in his cookie monster voice, saying it, and the music behind him sounds like, you know, like it's just. Yeah, yeah. I I found that as it it brought me in back into the world. I could find myself alive again and sort of thinking about grief, you know, mm-hmm. in ways that that I that I that I couldn't. So it it was it was reviving in a way, I guess. Sure. Sure. Yeah, I think uh, you know there's got to be some. Uh, it makes sense. It has to make sense to us in our world, and so music can do a lot for us. Um, I have it on all the time, basically. If I'm in the truck moving somewhere, I mean, if it's not a podcast or Jeff talking about something on the podcast, <laughs> it's uh, it's music Box in the background. Really. <laughs> yeah. So <Once> again. <laughs> um, you go go to the gym. You go your home, and you're kind of listening to things. So it's a constant in our world. How about from the movie? Um, I was thinking about the one with John Cusack when he talks about the five greatest breakup songs. High Fidelity. High Fidelity. High Fidelity. Five greatest breakup songs. And I don't mean that as light as it sounds. Right. Because we do that. Mm -hmm. Um, I was thinking when I ended my last relationship, Mm -hmm. I was playing music like that. And I finally got to that point. Right. And it was like, okay, now I know what I have to do. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, And, and, and it it, it helped... It helped articulate parts of yourself. You you were able to have a relationship with the places that you hurt, right? Mm-hmm. It was literally therapeutic, right? It, it was. This was this yeah. was a it was a necessary journey to get you to the next place you needed to be. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Well, there's there's so much to know and so much to learn about it, and there's such variety in all of these groups that we talked about here today. I mean, really, A to Z, if you want to go back from the pop all the way up to right, right, all the right. others that we've mentioned here, there's just so much that impacts us and kicks in the cognition, kicks in the feelings with it, and we seem to uh, just take it for granted in some ways. That uh, Well, you mentioned pop. Like, think of... Think of the greatest pop tune you can imagine. Think of the one that like really sort of, you know, the, 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 um, it doesn't have to be popular pop, but something that, right, that is, can you, th- can you think of one? Red rubber ball, the circle. Okay, all right. All pop? Right. Okay, okay. All right, I'm in a bind here. Um, Indian Lakes, Cosos. Uh, uh, oh, but do it again. So, so this is Paul Revere and the Raiders uh, okay. oh, from the days. Kicks, right. yeah, kicks. Kicks, oh, oh, I know, great I know song. I know, kicks oh, yeah. are getting harder to find. Yes, they I, are. Uh, I know that one. And they are. Red rubber ball. I don't know. And the cow sills. I know a little bit of, but you, you, you're outside of my zone. But I'll, yeah, I'll, right, I'll, I'll right, look right. for it. <laughs> but right, joy, right? This is this is just. You could almost. You could get. Um, uh, it can give you goosebumps. The hairs on the back of your neck stand up, right? You can suddenly get this. And we think that part of the reason that we get goosebumps is that, you know, our ancestors had fur. And part of the ways that we would um, display if we're under threat or whatever, if you, a cat, their their hair goes up. Right, right. right. And so there, there's a direct connection between these emotional states of, of just suddenly being just – and music does that, right? You can have a song that just caught a boom. Yeah. And, Oh yeah, I I think so, and also the, it it connects with a particular event. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, my Sharona, is that what I My Sharona, yes. My Sharona, which uh, uh, that, and and that that was at a fair here in Columbus back oh, when the it? kid, you know, yeah. back in the day, and so uh, that's the first one that popped up. But there's so many more out there that connects with a which, place and time. Listen in to your the lyrics history. of that song. That's a really dirty song. <laughs> you ever listen to it? Yes. No. Uh, yes. I don't, I don't really, no. <laughs> that is what you quoted earlier. We don't listen to the lyrics, right? We that's don't a, have. Yeah. That's all I listen to good. often is what? the lyrics. Mm-hmm. From when I was young, mm-hmm. I learned lyrics to songs, and all of a sudden the words would pop in my head, and that's all I, mm-hmm. you know. And They'll come out like in conversation or? Well, or too often. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but in that, that's another one of the subsystems, that, that and there is, um, there and... Um, we talk about this in therapy, like if I'm talking with someone and a lyric comes into my mind, mm-hmm. it often helps me to understand what's going on in this moment oh, yeah. that I otherwise okay. couldn't know. Okay. Like I remember I was, um, I've used this example a thousand times, but I am uh, I was uh, grading papers or uh, tests, whatever, out in front of, um, this was before Davidson Schuster building was built, and I was, and um, 
and I'm doing, and suddenly there are people around me, and, and that, the, the Elvis Costello lyric, there's a song called This Is Hell. This is hell, this is hell, hell is heaven in reverse, and why is that song in my head? And then I realize, wait a minute, these people are really annoying me. I really am. <laughs> all this time I've been exerting all this energy, and people are like, ah, oh, this is hell. You know? <laughs> That's where I'm at, all right. So. I, need to, I need to do something about that. The, one of the lyrics in that is, my favorite things plays again and again, but it's by Julie Andrews and not by John Coltrane. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You you may not be able to control some of those lyrics you that can't. pop in your head. You can't. That kind of thing. Well, man, th- this is uh, this has been cool today to talk about music and hear uh, your own experiences and we get to share some things about it. What's the final word on music? We, uh, is there anything we can do from a mental health side? Uh, well, is it comforting? Uh, can I go listen to that song when I'm down? Or uh, how do I do? I should, how do you I should engage this? as many activities as you can that'll help introduce you to yourself. That'll okay. help you to integrate parts of yourself that can generate that complexity we talk about. You don't have to think about it intellectually. Uh, we've we you know we've talked about music in a way that that doesn't that could preclude the possibility of some folks just enjoying it. It's enough to just do that. Right, but, right. You know. without, a, without a big purpose. You, you started out by asking the question, what is the purpose of music? Mm-hmm. So do you have an answer now well, that we've talked about? I like the idea that there's, um, there's this notion by uh, Schopenhauer, and he said that uh, all great art must be useless. And there's also a lyric by Elvis Costello, what shall we do, what shall we do with all this useless beauty? Well, it needs to be useless because utility is only such a small fraction of what's asked of us in the world. If our job is to dig ditches, then um, it's certainly important that we dig the ditches we need to. But the rest of life is something else other than that. And I think it, it, art, beauty, all of it should be wonderfully useless. So it has utility. That's certainly important. Okay. But it, its utility is in its uselessness, I think. So. Okay. All right. Rather profound in a way. Yeah, play with uh, and use all the crayons in the crayon box there you I think go. we talked about Jeff good to have you here today well, thank man. you thank, thank you, you for being here all right with that I guess we'll stop there and we'll see you next time